accessibility testing is an essential part of app development. It helps you identify bugs which can otherwise lead to a bad experience for users with disabilities. In this episode, we'll specifically discuss accessibility testing at the pre-launch stage of your app. Google Play's pre-launch report comes in handy here to identify the accessibility issues in your app. Pre-launch report is a report generated when an APK is uploaded to the release channel using Play Console. PLR finds and lists down issues in your app by testing it on a wide range of devices before it can affect the users. You can see three different pages in a pre-launch report. The overview page provides a summary of any unique errors, warnings, minor issues found during testing grouped into four categories stability, performance, accessibility, and security and trust. We'll specifically discuss the accessibility section in this video. The details for other sections can be checked in the document linked in the description. The details section shows a detailed report for each of the four categories summarized in overview. It also includes a screenshots tab, which includes screenshots of your app across different devices. The settings section can be used to customize your pre-launch report and make the findings more relevant to your app. You can provide test account credentials if your app is behind a login screen, entry points for the app to be crawled, languages for the app to be tested in, and additional robo scripts to control how the app is crawled. To get into more details about this section, check the document linked in the description. There is no setup required for accessibility testing. Every APK that is uploaded to the open, closed or internal tracks is automatically tested and the accessibility findings are included in the PLR. The accessibility findings from the devices are aggregated, separated into four categories, clustered by similar features and ranked by severity. Then all of that information is shown within the APK's pre-launch report. The user is first shown a summary, but they can drill down into the details of what each problem is, where it appears and what they can do to fix it. The summary page includes the number of unique accessibility issues, grouped by severity of finding and the type of accessibility issue. The severities fall in three categories, errors denoted by a red icon, warnings denoted by a yellow icon, minor issue denoted by a blue icon. If there are no issues detected by PLR, you'll see a green check. The type of accessibility issues fall in four categories. Content labeling issues determine whether elements have content labels for the screen readers to convey the meaning of the element. Touch target size issues determine whether elements in your app meet the recommended touch target size. Implementation based issues are layout issues which can affect users with motor impairments. Low contrast issues determine whether colors in your app have low contrast which can make them harder to be viewed. The detailed description for all these types can be found in the documents linked in the video description. Tests are now specifically run on a device switched to dark mode or night theme to catch low contrast issues there as well. You can click on the arrow icon in a row of accessibility finding to view details of the specific category and severity corresponding to that row. The details page lists down all the findings with screenshots. Each category is a heading with the number of unique issues per severity level. Each unique issue is shown with a screenshot along with the total number issues in the same category. Screenshots are clustered to avoid confusion and you can view all screenshots of a given cluster by clicking on the sample screenshot attached with the issue. The element for which issue is detected is highlighted in a red box in the screenshot. Clicking on a screenshot cluster shows more details about the issue which include the specifications of the device on which the screenshot was taken, like the information about device model, operating system, screen sizes, screen densities, and languages. 
it also shows the path of the element for which the issue is detected recommendations on how you can fix the issue and more examples which have similar issue these findings and recommendations can be used to track down the faulty elements and fix them you can re-trigger a new run of plr by uploading a fresh apk after fixing the issues and confirming that the findings do not reappear the app version appears in the overview section and you can choose a version for viewing the corresponding report. However, it should be kept in mind that like all automated accessibility testing, this is meant to complement and not replace usability testing with real users with a variety of accessibility needs. Thanks for watching and hit subscribe to get notified when the next episode in the series is released.